Number 98379 is take the if the trade failed measurably test. Okay. So make sure you can honestly say to yourself, if this trade fails miserably, I could totally live with myself. And the grammar said it should be, I could totally live with me. That sounds kind of odd. Let me know if you guys know a little English, if that's uh, correct. Now, it's okay to drop an F-bomb, but just make sure when you go into a trade, it's kind of like this s &G trading where I'm tracking my things that don't work. It's like, it's important because on those trades, it's not like they look fantastic. It's it's just like I'm I'm dealing with FOMO, okay? Because I'm seeing a market take off without me. But ask yourself, if it failed miserably, could you live with yourself? And that's a trade where if you take the trade and it fails, and of course, you're allowed to drop an F-bomb or two, right? But then you just shrug your shoulders and say, next, if I saw that same trade tomorrow, I would take it again. Now, some of you might be thinking, that sounds a lot like number 73,110, which was refer to your setup gauge on every trade and only take the F, yeah, trades. Well, that's like the negative counterpart of that, okay? An F, yeah, trade is an F, yeah, trade, okay? And if you're getting stopped out on FEA trades over and over again, each each particular FEA trade might have a random outcome. Okay, shit happens. We all know that. All predictions about the future, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. But if you're unsure of the trade, if it's not a 100% FEA trade, okay, then ask yourself, could you live with the outcome? The TARS trade was, was one of those trades. Now, I'm reluctant to say that if this trade doesn't work, I would be shocked because somebody's gonna pile into that stock and, and say, well, Dave Landry said it would work. Well, I don't know. The, the, the returns on each individual trade can be a little random and that's something to wrap your head around. But over time, you're going to catch these big winners, like for instance, like the K and F in here, okay? It's a nice little run. And uh, when did we get in, in that one? Uh, July of 2023, and this snapshot was taken on the 11th. By the way, you can go to davelander.com slash archives, and you look at you can look at the videos for each one of these days. Great, free, completely free exercise in learning my thought process, how I process things when it comes to the market, how I do the money management, a little bit of the psychology mixed in, what I'm looking at, what the sectors are doing, and so on and so forth. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. And again, I'll I'll look at where we are and I'll try to get them as up to date as possible without putting the, the real time data in there. If you want to look at the real time stuff, I'll make you a deal on that too. But anyway, Dave Lanner.com slash archives. But I remember thinking with this TARS because I watched the stock go up day after day after day after day after day. It kept showing up on my scans. And I'm like, when this thing sets up, I am taking this trade. I don't know why I'm talking like Grover. <laughs> we were, my wife, my, out of the blue, my wife's like, you remember Grover? I'm like, yeah. And we started watching Grover videos the other night and uh, good stuff. But anyway, but I remember thinking, watching the stock just go higher and higher and higher. I was just absolutely amazed with this stock and it was coming up in my momentum list. And this would certainly be one that if, you know, way back in the day when it was banging out these new highs would probably make it to the Landry 100. And then when it set up, we had, of course, the big blue arrow. We had persistency. Persistency is a stock's ability or any other market, excuse me, to go up day after day after day after day after day. I think that that's probably one of the biggest, most important things you could, did I say important <laughs> buttons? These people, why do they say important and button? I don't know. But it's one of the most important things you could do is, is look for persistency in the chart. Boy, Chief Orman is really wound up tonight. But look for persistency in the chart. I swear I'm not on anything, not even caffeine. <laughs> I, I do not have any performance enhancing drugs before my webinars. But you can see it goes up day after day after day after day after day. That's persistency. Mathematically, if you want to play around with it, I've done it before. I call it uh, my pickup sticks charts. And we could take a look at those and uh, 
I'll show you what that is. It's just something to play with. It, it's not, I'm not sure what value it is other than helping you see trends, but I'll show you that in one second. But mathematically, it's equivalent to linear regression. I just like to look at the chart and draw a line through as many bars as possible and see how many I can in, intersect. So that's got serious persistency. That just means that the demand is persistent for this particular stock. Now, it also accelerated higher. So if you rewind the tape, you'll see that I had it listed as an accelerating momentum strategy. But accelerating momentum strategy, you're looking for a trend, and then you look for that trend to accelerate higher, and then you look for the pullback. So there's your acceleration. And then you had a nice deep pullback, and it had a bit of a TKO within that pullback. We'll take a look at the mags in one second because that had a TKO today, which was kind of cool. I know I'm geeking out tonight. Now, as a general statement, it trades cleanly, okay? It tends to go up day after day after day, persistency, right? That's cleanly. It doesn't bounce around a whole lot like electrocardiogram. Yeah, the volatility increased when it shot higher, but then it corrected nicely, that nice deep pullback. But you can see it just trades nice and clean, okay, for the most part. And, you know, that might be a nice little tool to use. I was thinking about this as I was drawing this on here, how cool it looks. And I'm just geeking out tonight. But you could see that if you took some sort of like highlighter, you know, maybe maybe that could be a tool. And, and print off the chart and get a highlighter and say, okay, I'm going to take this trade. And, and if you're doing this with your highlighter, it looks like electrocardiogram when you're done, then it's not a stock that trades cleanly. So here's our TARS, and it, it scratched out on the on the remainder, which actually, I was actually surprised. I really was. I, I, I just felt like I knew the stock was going to go. I didn't bet the form on it. I bet no more than 2%, like I would on any other trade, even though I knew, so to speak, you never know for sure, but I knew it was going to work. And I was actually shocked initially when it wasn't working. And that's why we use stops, and that's why I didn't bet the form and go crazy. Now, maybe next time, I don't know if they had options, but maybe next time I'll step on the gas a tiny bit and, and maybe throw an option straight on for S&Gs, but you got to be careful with that stuff. But anyway, I just knew it was going to work, and it did. Now, that doesn't always happen. So, you know, hey, Dave, why don't you tell me when it's going to, when you feel that way? And it's like, no. And I've had clients in the past, like, I want you to call me, you know, I'll pay you extra if you call me when you really think one's going to work. I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Because any trade can be random, although there will be times where you really feel like it's it's going to work, okay? 